Hello. If you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, NicingCouncil.com, please note that we will no longer be posting videos here. If you are a subscriber, then I'm going to ask you to go to www.againsttheworld.tv and subscribe there. I have been asked to explain in greater detail why the scientific method, induction, can never discover truth and hence can never prove anything. Hello, I'm Jerry Johnson and I welcome you to this edition of Against the World. This episode of Against the World is being brought to you by some of our dear friends from the land down under, the Ridley family, Kevin, Beverly, Susanna, and Amber of the Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia. We love you guys. And by Sleep Essentials. Before you purchase a new mattress, visit Lee Carter and watch his free videos at www.mattresseducation.com. Dot net. Induction, as it functions in logic and help develop the so-called scientific laws, refers to a process of using sensory perception by observing an object or event and drawing a conclusion. However, contrary to the many pundits and self-styled defenders of the modern-day scientific method who reference these conclusions as proof for whatever they're attempting to establish, all arguments based on induction are fallacious and unprovable. Now, this does not mean that induction is not helpful, nor does it mean that we should abandon induction in medicine, astrophysics, or any field. What it should mean, however, is that we understand the limits of the scientific method, something modern-day pundits cannot seem to grasp. Now I'm going to ask you to notice that I'm saying pundits and not the scientists themselves. I have personally asked numerous scientists I know if science can ever prove anything, and they have to the person said no, not one thing. Now I know this statement contradicts everything you learned in the government schools, but before you change the channel, allow me to give you some examples as to why the scientific method can never prove anything. Atomism was used by many scientists like Galileo to invent things which worked. But years later, around 1930, the scientific community demonstrated that the theory he was operating under was false. What did they find out? That they could split an atom. The logical question then becomes, how then could Galileo's inventions work if they were based on a false premise? Well, my friends, the best way to answer this question is with another mystery from recent history, the problem of cows and milk fever. This problem was at first cured, or at least thought to be cured, by injecting the cow's udder with an antiseptic. Later, an injection of distilled water and compressed air alone, which was included in the first injection, also cured the milk fever. But now, these former theories have all been found to be false, even though they appeared to work. Today, milk fever is treated by a calcium injection and other things. So what's the point? Medical theories based on the empirical method, experimentation and observation, sometimes, and I might add thankfully, work. Unfortunately, they do not always work. There are many possible theories or reasons for why these theories work from time to time, but in the final analysis, we cannot know with certainty, especially if we're using induction, why it works one time and not another. Recently, I read an article about a man who had a vasectomy and his wife had had her tubes tied, and yet years later, she still became pregnant. DNA testing said the results concluded that the child was his. But when he had his sperm count tested, the doctor said there's no way this man got that woman pregnant, and yet it happened. It only goes to show that God is truly the one 
who opens and closes the womb. Bertrand Russell, a man who was no friend to Christianity, explained the limits of induction with these words. All inductive arguments, he wrote, in the last resort, reduce themselves to the following form. Now, you're going to have to listen to this carefully. Here's the form Bertrand Russell said they reduce themselves to. If this is true, that is true. Now that is true, therefore this is true. This argument, he states, is of course formally fallacious. Suppose I were to say, if bread is a stone, and stones are nourishing, then this bread will nourish me. Now this bread does nourish me, therefore it is a stone, and stones are nourishing. Russell said, if I were to advance such an argument, I might certainly be thought foolish. Yet it would not be fundamentally different from the argument upon which all scientific laws are based. Dr. Gordon H. Clark explained the problem this way. The given hypothesis implies certain definite results. The experiment actually gives these results. Therefore, the hypothesis is verified and can be called a law. Obviously, he continues, this argument is the fallacy of asserting the consequent. And since all verifications must commit this fallacy, it follows that no law or hypothesis can ever be logically demonstrated. Well, Dr. Clark and Russell are correct. Verification based on induction must commit the fallacy of asserting the consequent. What is the fallacy of asserting the consequent? Allow me to explain the fallacy this way. Suppose someone said to you, when it is raining outside, the president carries an umbrella. The president is carrying an umbrella, therefore it must be raining outside. Hopefully you can see the problem. The president could be carrying an umbrella to protect himself from exposure to the sun or for a myriad of other reasons not known to you. This is the fallacy of asserting the consequent and it is, as Russell stated, the basis for all so-called scientific laws. Another example, if one throws a rock into a canyon and the rock hits the canyon floor, can he with absolute certainty maintain that all rocks will drop to the canyon floor? What about the next rock? And then the millionth rock? Ad infinitum. You may conclude that the probability is high that the rock will hit the canyon floor, but probability is not certainty. And this is why previous scientific laws are overthrown, new ones take their place, and medical solutions which worked on some do not work on others. No matter how many experiments one does, no matter if it works or not, induction can never lead a person to be able to say with certainty that he has discovered the truth. For you see, my friends, truth can never be discovered. It can only be revealed. And I submit to you that it was by God in the Bible. Until next week, this is Jerry Johnson standing contra mundum against the world.